Uh, the first speaker uh, who is going to talk on uh, gauge theory, I thought uh, it may be worth concentrating uh, on some uh, concrete problems. Uh, and uh, I will have some uh, more uh, focused questions. So I will have also some answer to the questions, but some of the questions will remain completely open. So uh, let me fix some notations. So I will start with a uh, closed uh, oriented Romanian uh, three manifold. And uh, I will choose a spin structure so that I have a spinner bundle over M. And I also uh, choose a Hermitian line bundle and A will be a connection on L, a Hermitian connection. And uh, then we can consider the uh, Seibert-Whitney equations was n spinners, uh, which I can write in a uh, very similar form as the classical zyberg whitney equation. That is, uh, the spin of psi uh, is harmonic, and the curvature couples to psi. So let me know this as SWN. So let me explain uh, what is what in those equations. So uh, psi is a section of home Cn into the spin C spinner bundle. So uh, here I could have uh, any SUN bundle, but since we are on the three manifold, I can choose a topological trivialization. Still, we may have uh, some non-trivial connection on this bundle, uh, but this won't play any role for this talk. So uh, we may also assume that I uh, have just the product connection here. So if you wish, then uh, you can think uh, about psi as the n-tuple of uh, ordinary uh, spinners. And uh, mu of psi is psi psi dual minus one half form of psi squared. And this is uh, a section of uh, SUS multiplied by I. And this matches precisely uh, the left-hand side of the equation. Right? Uh, so uh, you could have introduced the weight, uh, but you're saying that that's not going to apply in the uh, well, uh, that, that's uh, no. That's, that's a different uh, question. So you could have uh, take you know uh, some different line bundles and also consider the equations for those line bundles. Uh, but I'm not going to discuss this. Uh, I, I mean, this is a reasonable problem. Uh, but the point is that uh, why we have uh, why we are interested in this problem is because this is related to uh, G two instantons. And the base that you have to choose here is dictated by the ADHM construction. And so from there, you have to choose uh, just the same base for all line bundles. All right, so uh, now uh, we have the corresponding moduli space. That is, I consider pairs A psi. Maybe I'll choose. Other blackboard. And you divide this, so we take uh, all solutions and divide by the gauge group. So in our case, this is just uh, so the, the gauge group is a billion and uh, so we have this infinite dimensional group, uh, which, can, which we can divide out. And so uh, since we have some 
a moduli space, natural question that arises is uh, what can be said about the boundary of this moduli space. So the question is sort of vague because uh, you know we don't have any compactification, and the uh, part of the question is uh, uh, is there any reasonable compactification of that? Uh, so a partial answer to this is given by the theorem that Thomas uh, presented uh, partially uh, yesterday to us. So let me give you a more precise statement of that. So this is due to myself and Thomas Wolpuski. Um, that AK and Psi K be uh, any sequence of solutions, then there are two cases. Uh, namely, the first case is uh, assume lim sup uh, of the so what you take you take the sequence of l2 norms of the uh, spinners uh, and you consider the case when this is uh, less than infinity um, then there exists a subsequence which i will denote by the same letters uh, which converges to a solution uh, of the same equations. Now, uh, so uh, this is uh, the first case. So maybe schematically, if you imagine that your uh, moduli space looks something like a disk, uh, we may have uh, a sequence which converges to a point in the uh, interior of the disk, and this is described by the uh, case A. But now we may have also a different sequence which converges to a boundary, so we don't have this boundary actually. And uh, the question is, what can be said uh, in that case? So assume lim sup of the L2 norms of spinners uh, is infinity. And there exists a subsequence, uh, again denoted by the same letters, AK psi K, and the subset. that in M such that. So you see, in this case, uh, our spin uh, goes to infinity, so we don't have any chance for convergence. And uh, the best thing we can do, we can uh, renormalize our spinner. So uh, what I take, uh, there is uh, such that the sequence AK1 over norm psi K in L2 psi K, so let me denote this by psi k twiddle, converges over the complement of that. Uh, well, let's say to some a0 psi 0. OK, so uh, at this point, the statement uh, is empty, because that could be uh, the whole manifold M. Uh, so we have to say something about uh, uh, the limiting solution. Namely, uh, that is closed. And the Hausdorff dimension of that is at most 1. In particular, that is not the whole manifold. It, it's, in some sense, a tiny subset of M. And secondly, uh, the limiting solution satisfies sort of the same equation, uh, but up to one term. Namely, you don't uh, couple the quadratic term uh, 
of the as applied to the spinner, so this is now with twiddles, to the curvature, but you just require that mu of psi twiddle vanishes. And this is something that you uh, can expect from the original equation. So what happens after the renormalization is that the first equation is preserved, but the second equation got multiplied by a small parameter in front of the curvature, and as you go to the limit, uh, you kill this term. And uh, maybe one more piece of information that uh, I can provide. If we have just two spinners, then we also know that the limiting connection is flat, and the holonomy of a naught uh, is plus minus one. So this holds only if uh, we really have just two spinners, which will be the main case for the t uh, today's talk. In general, we should we expect FA to be zero? Or? <laughs> uh, no. Um, no, there, there is no actually reason for that. Now, uh, I don't want to go into the details of the proof, but I wanted to give you sort of an idea, uh, just in three lines, about uh, some points that will be important for the rest of the talk. Uh, so some remarks on the proof. Now, uh, if you have, uh, so on the proof, actually, just of the uh, second case, of B, so the proof of A is uh, by standard methods. There is nothing new uh, there. Uh, so, if you have a sequence like uh, in this, uh, in in uh, the case B over there, uh, what you can do, you can take the uh, first uh, norms of psi k, uh, so the point-wise norms of uh, psi k twiddles, and then you have a sequence of functions. And what you can uh, show that this uh, converges in C0 M uh, to some function. Let me know this by V, which is just a continuous function on M. And then you declare that to be the zero locus of this function. And so, uh, in particular, what you see immediately is that that is closed. Um, and then what you can uh, prove is that uh, for any compact subset of the complement, uh, and for any R which is small enough, uh, you, you consider the following quantity. So you take the integral of the L2, norm of the curvature, but over the ball of radius R centered at M. So uh, M is a point from K. And uh, you show that this is bounded by a constant. I mean, what, what appears on the left-hand side is a scale invariant quantity. And you should interpret this that there is no energy concentration outside of that. So. And using that, this, you can prove that uh, there is uh, a convergence. And the convergence is in uh, W2, 2 for spinners and, uh, and W1, 2 for uh, uh, connections. And uh, one remark that I want to make about this is uh, so. That is defined to be the zero locus of a function, but in fact, what uh, we need is the so the set of all those points where this quantity remains uh, bounded. So um, there is this R k, uh, which converges to zero, such that R k integral b r k 
squared uh, is not bounded, so uh, goes to infinity. Uh, right. So, so in fact, what, what, what you prove is that uh, this set cont contains all bad points, and the bad point is one where this quantity goes to infinity, and that's why I will call, the, uh, call this a blow-up set. So in some set, the blow. Say it again. The factor r in front of the. Yeah, yeah. That's precisely to make this quantity uh, scale invariant. All right. So uh, this uh, gives some answer to the question. So to my initial question, what can be said uh, about the boundary? But now, uh, so sort of this reduces to another problem, namely, uh, now we, uh, what can we say about solutions of these equations, and what can we say about that? Right. So uh, let me uh, say something about that. So uh, so actually, Thomas uh, told us yesterday uh, the answer to that question, but it will be helpful uh, maybe to look uh, again at that. Uh, so. Uh, what, what, what we can do, uh, we can consider the space of homomorphisms from Cn into uh, C2. So now uh, this is the fiber uh, where my spinner uh, takes values in. And in here, I have the set of all those p's where uh, b, b star minus 1 half norm b star squared equals 0. Uh, and this uh, set is a one invariant. So what I can do, I can divide this by u1. And what I get at the end, uh, this is a space uh, so-called m1n. So the frame moduli space uh, of uh, charge 1. S U N instantons on uh, R four, and also uh, I consider only centered uh, instantons. Okay. Now there is one point uh, which will disturb us quite a lot. In order uh, to get uh, you know to get a manifold on the left hand side, you have to remove singularities. And in that case, it means that you have to remove uh, 0. All right. R4, just on the flat space, or if you wish, uh, on S4, on the four sphere. And now, uh, if you fix a point M on the complement of Z, that is, we don't hit the singularity of this uh, space. Then we know that psi m is contained in this subset, uh, so so satisfies psi m uh, twiddle satisfies uh, psi m psi m twiddle star minus one half norm of psi m squared equals zero. That is precisely in this uh, uh, lies in this space. And so we can project this. Let me say this is pi. Uh, we can take the projection of psi. And we get a, uh, a section. So this is a section of the bundle m over m. With the fiber m1 and over there. All 
So, so in, in other words, we have a family uh, of instantons parametrized by uh, our manifold M without Z. And so uh, what Thomas explained yesterday is that this family is not an arbitrary one, but it has uh, some nice properties. And the property is that this satisfies some extra equation, which is called the Fueta equation. So the theorem uh, to uh, myself. Uh, so if I will know this as I, then I is a Fueta section of M. Uh, and what you can also say is that and, uh, a zero is the pullback of the universal connection on a certain uh, bundle. So uh, let me explain this. So uh, you can view this set as a principle you one bundle over this modular space. And this comes equipped with a natural connection, which, has, uh, which I denote by uh, universal connection. And if you pull this back by, by your theta section, what you will get is A0. And so, uh, so locally what we have is I is just a map from R3 into the moduli space of 1n instantons. Uh, and this satisfies the Fueta equation. That is, uh, you have now uh, three complex structures uh, on this uh, moduli space. And uh, you require that I1, uh, say, d i uh, over dx1 plus i2 di over dx2 plus i3 uh, i3 di over dx3 plus some lower order terms equals 0. So the lower order terms arise here because we have some uh, non-trivial bundle. Uh, and so what we conclude from this is that we can uh, describe uh, part of the boundary uh, of the moduli space of cyber witten instantons with n spinners uh, as a subset uh, of pairs I set where I is for the section of M uh, and uh, over, say, the complement of Z. And there is an extra compatibility condition, which is you take the pointwise norm of I, and uh, this extends as a continuous function on all of M, and the zero locus is precisely Z. Now, uh, you may wonder what is the norm of I. Uh, well, uh, you know, if you take norm uh, upstairs, this descends to the moduli space, and this is what I mean by the norm. All right, so uh, this gives some, uh, I mean, uh, this is just part of the boundaries. There is another part coming from reusables, but I won't go into that. Uh, the next question which arises is, uh, what can be said about that? Now, uh, uh, if you look at, at, at this description, uh, you may think naively that uh, there is no reason uh, for that to be there. So this bundle uh, is a, uh, uh, so the dimension of the fiber is at least uh, four. And the singularity has co-dimension four. And therefore, so we are on the three manifold, and we have a section of this bundle. So you, you might naively expect that, uh, generic, at least generically, you won't have any uh, singular set Z. Uh, but this 
happens to be too naive, uh, at the following results so, uh, shows. Uh, namely, this is a recent result uh, due to myself. Uh, in the case, if you have just two spinners, uh, then the uh, cohomology, uh, the first homology, so the homology class of Z is well defined in some suitable sense and happens to be Poincare dual to the first term class of the determinant line bundle. So this is all in H1M with Z coefficients. So you shouldn't take uh, this statement too literally, uh, because it, it may happen that uh, that is singular, and it's not clear uh, what this homology class uh, should actually be. But I uh, will explain this uh, in a few minutes. And uh, so uh, this holds, uh, probably I should stress this, for all matrix on M. Not, not just generically, but this is really uh, whatever metric you have on your base manifold. Now, uh, let me uh, briefly explain uh, which difficulties you have uh, to deal with when proving this. So, uh, first of all, as I said, uh, that is not smooth. At least in general, there is no uh, reason to expect that that is smooth. But even if that is smooth, uh, then, uh, so even if smooth, uh, you see, what can happen is that uh, you must consider sort of families of uh, matrix. And it may happen that you have uh, sort of that looks like this. But then if you change your matrix, what you uh, become in some, at some point is uh, a fat circle, uh, with, uh, so it should be counted. Uh, with way two, uh, well, uh, these two circles collapse. Well, you, make a, you may have also a different phenomenon where you, you know, you have uh, two circles, but they are oriented in a different way. So you pass to the limit, you see a circle, but actually uh, this shouldn't be counted at all. Um, so what we need uh, is, even if f is smooth, we need a, a weight function. and orientations. And uh, right, uh, that's precisely what I, uh, I have already erased. So, uh, but if you remember, so we, uh, I have defined that to be the zero locus of a continuous function. right? And so uh, we also know that that uh, must be of dimension 1. And we are a priori in a non-generic case. So there is no reason why uh, that uh, should be uh, oriented, or even should, why that should have dimension one. Right. So uh, let me explain uh, how you get those weights uh, and orientations. So strictly speaking, what you have here is the homology class, which is associated to some weight function. So Z, some weight function theta, and orientations. Now, um, so maybe sketch of proof uh, is this. So the, uh, the first step is so, uh, I claim that there is a section S of the determinant bundle such that uh, 
that is actually the zero locus of this uh, section. And uh, this section is just a continuous one. So you don't, uh, you can't uh, assume more than just continuity of the section. And the reason for that is very uh, simple. So what you have, you have that uh, psi uh, is a map from C2 into S tensor L. But now we can take the determinant of that. So what we get is a map from C into uh, lambda 2 S tensor uh, L squared, but this is trivial, so what we get is just L squared. In other words, we have a, a section of L squared. Um, right, and then, then if you uh, check, so uh, this is besides in my S, uh, if you check, then uh, the zero locus of S is uh, the uh, is our set Z. And next step that you need is that uh, Z, so this, this is actually due to Taubes, uh, Z contains an, a, a subset zero, which is open everywhere dense. Uh, and uh, this is actually smooth, maybe not smooth, but C1 embedded curve. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say C1, uh, well, this is a Lipschitz curve, but uh, for the uh, purposes that we need, this actually doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. So you can even uh, say a little more. Uh, in fact, what you have, uh, you have some uh, finite number of disjoint balls. So you don't know what happens in those balls. Uh, you just know they are small. Uh, and then uh, if you remove those balls, uh, you know, uh, the uh, subset which lies outside of those balls is uh, Lipschitz curves. And uh, this is enough. Uh, now what you can do, uh, you can take now a small circle, say around a smooth point, you can take a trivialization of the line bundle, and this gives you a map. Uh, so if you restrict S, uh, let it be, say, gamma, uh, this gives you a map from uh, gamma into C star, but gamma is just this one, so we can take the uh, degree of that, and I will. So uh, gamma is now uh, now depends on 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 Z, so that is a point uh, on my curve Z, and so I will declare theta uh, of m to be the degree uh, of this map. Um, one thing which is here, this uh, degree is not quite well defined because we need to choose uh, an orientation of gamma. There is no preferred orientation there. Uh, but uh, if I will take the absolute value of that, uh, this is now well defined. And takes values in z uh, big O equals 0. So this is how uh, I get the weight function. But now if you know that this weight is non-zero, uh, then uh, this gives uh, uniquely an orientation so that uh, you know, this degree is positive. And this defines me an orientation on the, uh, on the curve. I mean, uh, in which uh, sense? No, so so the zero is just a subset of that. Uh, I mean, you, you, yes. And then you use z zero to define this degree. Yes. What if you had a different z zero? So 
So if you have Z, you can think of Z0 as a set of smooth, smooth points in, in Z. No, you don't, you don't have any orientation here. So I'm not claiming anything about orientation. It won't affect the degree. Say it again? It won't affect the degree to use a different set of zero. Uh, that's correct. I don't need uh, an orientation for that. What I'm saying, I take uh, you know, a small loop. I consider uh, this degree. And if I take the absolute values, uh, no orientation appears here. Okay, unique maximums are zero. So, uh, in fact, what you can uh, now do, you can uh, collapse those balls. This doesn't affect any homology classes. And what you get, uh, you get an embedded graph. So, you, uh, in, in this particular case, you will get uh, something like this. Now, this, is, uh, this has attached weights. Let's say, I don't know, maybe 1, 1, uh, whatever. Uh, it has also some orientations. Provided that the weights are non-zero, and one particular property that it has is the following: so uh, if you fix any uh, vertex, let's say uh, v, then the sum uh, over uh, all edges uh, for all e which begins at v equals the sum for all uh, Thus, E, where E ends uh, at V. So uh, maybe uh, if this is of uh, weight 1, so th there is one incoming edge. Uh, there, there are two outcoming uh, edges. So one of them must have uh, weight 0, and another one must be oriented in this way and have uh, weight 1. Because uh, I know that there are finitely many balls here. And this is, uh, I mean, it's not a trivial statement. Uh, all right, and uh, so uh, then uh, if you know this property, then uh, it essentially uh, tells us that the homology class of this graph is well defined. So I'll define uh, that. Uh, that uh, orientations to be just uh, the class of uh, sum over all edges uh, theta e times e. All right, and this is uh, how I get uh, a well-defined homology class. But then uh, it's not uh, hard to show that this mass represents a point gradual of the first chain class of the determinant bundle. Just uh, because this is the zero locus of some section. So in my case, this, the section is just continuous. So it doesn't follow automatically from uh, classical results. But you have to perturb a little bit, and that's uh, what you get. Uh, OK. So that's all what I wanted to tell you about the proof. Uh, but the statement, <coughs> the statement has some interesting corollaries. Uh, let me discuss now those. Uh, so maybe uh, before discussing uh, the corollaries, uh, I think the main message uh, here is that uh, uh, this set set uh, should be taken seriously in the sense that uh, you can't hope to perturb this away by some suitable perturbations, uh, at least you know if your manifold is not doesn't have a trivial uh, homo doesn't have trivial homology groups. Uh, in any case, so uh, one concrete corollary is that if 
uh, n equals to 2 and z is finite, then the determinant line bundle is trivial. Uh, so let me give you an. No, no, it, uh, it can be, for instance, here. So uh, actually, what I have discussed is a one-dimensional component. Th there may be a zero-dimensional uh, component, so some set of points there, but they don't disturb us at all, right? So uh, I mean. If you want to define H1, there is no reason to worry about uh, some points, so at least isolated points. And so, uh, so, so, uh, how, how can you get an example of that? Uh, so you may take psi to be a harmonic spinner uh, on uh, M with set with the zero locus of psi uh, being finite. Now, if you have two spinners, our bundle, uh, so uh, with, you know, uh, fibers uh, M12 is now isomorphic to M12 uh, so uh, this is just the spinner bundle divided by plus minus one. So uh, in, in the way I define this bundle, I didn't include uh, the origin, but now here I have uh, the origin included. That's the only difference. Uh, and so, and so uh, if you have a harmonic spinner, uh, uh, so that is a section of this bundle, not divided, but you can project and think of this as a flat uh, section. So uh, then psi z does not appear as a limit of uh, cyber quitten monopoles with two spinners uh, in the case if the determinant bundle uh, is non trivial. Right, in other words, uh, if you fix a determinant bundle, uh, then there are obstructions for theta sections to appear as limits of cyber quitting monopoles. So not all of them uh, will appear as a boundary. Now, maybe uh, a little more interesting uh, example where Z is actually uh, one dimensional can also be constructed. Uh, so what you can do, you can, uh, so that's another example. You can start with a harmonic spinner uh, on uh, a two-manifold, uh, say closed, uh, oriented, and you can take the three-manifold to be the product of sigma with S1. And you can think of psi as, uh, well, so, so you know, uh, if you consider psi as a harmonic spinner on sigma 2, it necessarily has uh, finitely many zeros, so this is finite, and this means if you consider this as a spinner on M, uh, the zero locus is uh, just disjoint union of uh, points times circles. That is, uh, it is one dimensional. But now, uh, whatever weight you have attached and orientations to these circles, uh, what you end up with, so this homology class that that uh, orientation uh, lives in uh, that times S1, right? But this is just a subset 
of the first homology with a proper subset of H1 uh, sigma cross S1. And this means, in particular, that uh, if you uh, think of psi again as a further section with uh, this uh, set, set, this does not appear as a limit of cyber witten monopoles in the case when uh, the determinant bundle is not the pullback of a bundle over sigma. And uh, I mean, uh, so if, what we have seen is that there are some obstructions, but it is also quite likely that there are other obstructions. Um, now, uh, this raises uh, a few questions, uh, namely the following. So one question is, uh, is that quantifiable for all matrix on M? I mean, the, the, the way that I uh, uh, presented you the proof, you may even hope for maybe better result. Uh, Maybe something like uh, that is an embedded graph uh, a priori. So in some non-trivial way, so it can't be true literally, but maybe something uh, closer than that. Uh, uh, closer, uh, maybe something stronger than just uh, rectifiable. But in any case, it would be nice to know whether that is rectifiable uh, for all metrics in general. Uh, so Taubes did a lot of work on that, uh, but still, you know, uh, it's not known whether uh, we have this. Now, if yes, so if the answer is yes, uh, then what uh, you can easily show is that that theta orientation uh, is actually an uh, integer multiplicity current. And uh, we may ask the following question. So uh, let AK psi K twiddle uh, converge to I Z. Thus, the sequence of uh, curvatures converge uh, to, to this current Z theta or uh, in the sense of currents. Uh, oh, uh, maybe uh, let me explain a little bit. Uh, so. Uh, what I what, what I uh, told you is that the limiting curvature, at least in the case when we have just two spinners, and I'm discussing only this case, uh, is flat outside of that, right? But if the determinant bundle is non-trivial, what we can't have a flat matrix. Uh, so our sequence uh, is a sequence of non-flat matrix, and you know, uh, the uh, sequence of L2 norms is, uh, is some uh, topological constant. So you can't uh, so you, Something must happen uh, around that. And uh, from, from the, the proof, uh, how, how do you obtain that? Uh, it was sort of clear that uh, the energy concentrates uh, along that. And uh, the question, so, so it is reasonable to expect that in the limit, you have a delta function uh, uh, along that. And uh, the question would be to prove that this is uh, indeed true. And one remark is that uh, the, the answer is yes. So. The answer is yes uh, in the case of S1 invariant uh, solutions uh, over 
sigma cross S1. And uh, this is the recent result uh, of uh, Alexander Dorn. Now, uh, maybe, uh, so, so uh, everything that I uh, told so far is true, is true uh, in the case when you have uh, just two spinners. But uh, we may ask uh, what can be said when we have at least three spinners. This is for two spinners. Uh, Alexander, is this just for two, or uh, um, I think this? But that, but then uh, you have to generalize this question because uh, the the uh, limiting connection won't be flat, and uh, you have to take this into account. So you, you will have some delta function on that, but not non-flat, uh, you know, connection uh, outside of that. Anyway, so uh, let us consider the case when. Uh, n is uh, at least 3. So uh, what we have then, uh, uh, we can represent our moduli space of uh, SUN instantons over R4 as the quotient of, uh, of the form uh, UN over U1 <coughs> cross UN minus 2 times positive numbers. And so uh, we can divide here by a larger group, say by U2, and forget this factor. So uh, in essence, we have a map into Un divided by U2 cross Un minus 2. And you easily rec recognize the space on the ra right-hand side. I will think of this as the Grassmannian of N minus 2 spaces in Cn. Uh, and so we have this projection. And uh, this means that if you have uh, a theta section uh, of M1N, we can apply sigma um, to I, and we get uh, a map from M into the Grossmannian of N minus two planes in Cn. But now, uh, so, so uh, we have to consider the case when, uh, when uh, I mean, so, so sort of uh, the, the, the case which I want to consider is when you can represent your theta section as a, uh, you know, through a pair A0 psi 0. So uh, I've said that uh, any such pair which satisfies sort of the general cyborg Witten equations gives you uh, a theta section. And uh, let me consider this case. Uh, so uh, what I get is uh, then uh, this map, let me denote this maybe by phi, uh, has a, a particularly simple description, namely uh, phi at the point m. So I assume this is on the complement of that. Uh, is just the kernel of psi m. So, so uh, what I have, I have a spinner which is uh, homomorphism from C n into S tensor L. But I know that this satisfies some quadratic relation, and this quadratic relation tells me that this uh, homomorphism is surjective, and it means that the kernel is, has dimension n minus minus two. So uh, this map is uh, well defined, at least outside of that. And the analogous statement in this case uh, is this. Let a0 psi0 be a solution of, you know, da0 psi0 is 0, and mu of psi0 uh, is 0. 
uh, of course, uh, I assume that this is over the complement of that. And so let me denote maybe this uh, map by phi 0. So assume phi 0 admits a continuous uh, extension to a map on uh, the whole manifold uh, M. So that is, I have a map phi from M, now without, co uh, not the complement of that, but previously the whole manifold into Grossmannian N minus 2 of Cn. Uh, then the following whole, so the class of that understood in, a, uh, in the same way as I explained, so really here the orientation and uh, weights come into play, uh, is the Poincaré dual of C1 L squared plus uh, Poincaré dual uh, of C1 phi star of the determinant of S. Now, so what is S? S here at the uh, over Grossmannian n minus 2 Cn is a uh, tautological bundle. So I have a, the tautological bundle over the Grossmannian. I take its determinant. Uh, now, because phi is defined uh, everywhere, I can pull this back. Uh, and so I have uh, this first hand class well defined, and uh, I have this equality. Now, now uh, if well, you can easily see if n equals to 2, we immediately get. Uh, the result for two spinners, because uh, in that case, uh, the target space is just uh, the point, and any map uh, extends to a continuous map. Right? And so the, the question is, if n is uh, really bigger than 3, uh, if uh, this map uh, phi 0, so the question is, does phi 0 has an extension in general. So if, uh, you can construct examples where uh, phi 0 indeed has an extension. So uh, the, the statement here is not empty. It doesn't uh, reduce to the previous one. But uh, I don't know uh, whether this is true in general. Um, maybe... Uh, one remark here is that uh, there are uh, sort of obvious topological restrictions for that, uh, namely, um, namely. Uh, so what you can easily see is that if now maybe let me assume. Assume uh, for simplicity that that is smooth. Uh, and that, in that case, I have the tubular neighborhood of that, uh, which is homotopically just uh, you know, a bunch of uh, S1s. Uh, but the boundary is the two torus, or a bunch of uh, two tori. So it's, uh, and what can happen is uh, that if you take phi, uh, phi 0, so if you pull back the determinant bundle of S by phi 0 and restrict this to the boundary, uh, it may be non trivial. Right. In, in that case, you, you know that there is no extension, because if there were an extension, uh, u is uh, just uh, just a circle, and uh, you know uh, then 
over u, this bundle, uh, uh, so uh, the, the pullback of this bundle would be trivial. In particular, it would be trivial on the boundary. Uh, but uh, let's assume that uh, this uh, simple topological abstraction vanishes, and the question is really, uh, if, if you know that, uh, whether phi 0 does have an extension. Now, I'm already uh, over time, so I wanted to say something about G2 instantons. Let me uh, maybe say just a few words. So uh, the, the reason why we get uh, non-empty Z is really topological, and the, 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 uh, in essence, this means the following. So if you consider M12, uh, topologically, this is uh, just RP3. And we have a canonical bundle here. And if Z were empty, at least generically, uh, this would mean that we can get any bundle from this universal bundle on a three manifold. But this space is uh, too simple to get any bundle to, uh, as a pullback. So and this is the reason why you get a uh, non-trivial uh, set Z. But if you go to uh, G2 instantons, uh, this argument doesn't work. So uh, maybe this is an indication that, uh, in fact, uh, Z uh, may be empty, at least generically, in the case of G2 instantons. Um, OK, let me stop here. Thank you very much. Say, uh, they might, I think they might screw up the idea that you can count the moduli spaces of your right. with a virtual cycle. Um, can you tell us anything about that? I, uh, It doesn't seem to be uh, an easy question. So uh, if you would naively, uh, I mean, if you were as naive as we were at the beginning, and you would uh, imagine that that is empty, so what you uh, would conclude that uh, the boundary appears only in co-dimension 1. That is, uh, generically, you would have a finite number of points, and you can count those. Uh, but you have to worry uh, what happens in uh, one parameter families. Right, and, uh, but this is precise, so it, do, it doesn't need to be uh, constant along one parameter families, and this, this is precisely what we are, we are looking for. But now, uh, I'm thinking that the solutions could fall into the reducible solution as well as falling on infinity. Yes, uh, it can happen indeed, and uh, I don't really have a good understanding uh, what happens in, in the case when you uh, indeed fall into reducible. Are there no more questions?